low quality video on YouTube with low quality audio. I apologize again that I'm not at the school with my high quality video and high quality audio. It's just, just what it is. All right. We want 4K HD. <laughs> uh, that would be Ultra HD if, if it was 4K, but um, I, at least the camera that I have at the school is 1080p. I'm pretty sure that this one is 4... something 484. <laughs> or maybe it's, uh, maybe it's 780. I don't know. It doesn't say. So it's pretty low quality, and I'm sure the audio is not great from these... Uh, from this microphone. Can you hear my beard scratching against the microphone? Yes, we can. Ah, shoot. I knew that, that would happen. It's not um, noticeable, actually. Tape it to your cheek. Tape it to my... <laughs> um, okay. So let's talk about the... Let's talk about space stations in general. Other than the International Space Station, can anyone... What is that? Pounding. Someone is being very loud with their keyboard. Um... <laughs> Does anyone know any other space stations other than the International Space Station? Oh, shit. Um, oh, my goodness. Miguel. Hey, Miguel. Is this Miguel? Hey. Let's make it. Yeah. This. Okay. First of all, I what's going on I YouTube? Left. Second of all, you just swore. I turn, your, turn your microphone off. I... Tried to do that by clicking my icon, but I don't know how. <laughs> Last time I tried to mute myself, I mute you. Okay, well, I'm going to mute you then. Oh, you're muted. Don't worry, I got oh. it. I got it. Okay. Mir. Mir. Very good. So, oh, uh, the, the Skylab space station. Skylab. Good. Yeah. Any other space stations come to mind? Mir, Skylab? What are you counting as a space station? Um, the, two modules docked together, or it doesn't even have to be two modules. I remember be, one with like the name of like program or something. The I don't know, the Sally, no. Oh, the the Soyuz Apollo test program. I think that was a space station. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, uh, <clears throat> the Apollo Soyuz test program was absolutely a, a space station, so that counts. There's really only one that one more that I can think of. Um, well, there's actually two more. The shuttle. The shuttle. I wouldn't call the shuttle a um, a space station, just because it was not very big and it didn't space. It didn't stay in space. Salute. Yes, very good, Skylar. My my. Um, yeah, so Solute, Apollo Soyuz test program, the International Space Station, Mir, Skylab, and then the Chinese have had two space stations, Tiangong 1 and Tiangong 2. Um, How long till Tiangong 3? Tiangong um, 3, I think that they're actually just going to continue to build on Tiangong 2, which is still in order. Oh, do they have it? Still orbiting. It's still orbiting, but it is not um, occupied. I think <laughs> the Chinese are really secretive about everything, so it's hard to know exactly. They have sent people into a space they station. Have propaganda, though. It's kind of weird. Yeah. It's almost like they censor their media. <laughs> yeah. Um, the yeah, they did send people up to their space station, so um, we'll count those. But I, I'm not going to talk about them a lot. Really, the the um, Apollo Soyuz um, test project um, or test program was really the first or test project. Yeah, I remember correctly. It was really the first um, space station. There are no external images of the. Apollo Soyuz test program. It's all just like paintings or computer renderings. But this is what it looked like. This is the Apollo module here with its service module. So this has all the oxygen and fuel cells and some fuel for this large nozzle here. And then this is a special airlock that they had to devise because these two um, 
these two spacecraft don't have the same internal pressure. They don't have the same internal air pressure. <clears throat> um, the Soyuz uses normal air at normal atmospheric pressure. The Apollo, they, I guess they just had to be special and unique. The Apollo only used 20% normal air pressure with an all oxygen, um, with an all oxygen, what's the word I'm looking for? Atmosphere. So I thought they did that after Apollo 1. Nope. <laughs> Apollo 1, the Apollo 1 fire was <clears throat> really, really bad. Um, obviously, it killed three people um, because of the pure oxygen atmosphere. But the problem with Apollo 1 is that they had a pure oxygen atmosphere at above normal atmospheric pressure. Which so, is, means what? Which means um, I could I could rub my clothes together um, at a medium speed and create a fire that would quickly get out of hand. How do you recreate that on Earth? <laughs> um, get a whole bunch of oxygen and a sealed container and pump the oxygen into a sealed container. <laughs> it's going to be fun to try. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but the, the Soyuz used just and still uses because we still use this thing um uses just normal atmospheric pressure with normal atmospheric composition so 80 percent nitrogen uh about 20 percent oxygen with some carbon dioxide and stuff the the apollo for simplicity just used only oxygen at 20 percent atmospheric pressure so what's the benefit um it, it's simpler um, you don't have to compress all of the different type. You don't have to compress the air, um, and you can compress it more, and it it really becomes um, lighter. There's there's a couple of advantages. Um, you can't really boil anything. Like you, you couldn't make coffee on the Apollo. Not that you could make coffee anyway, but um, just because nothing would boil at normal temperatures. But anyway, so they created this. Station. Um, they created this custom airlock so that they could dock together, and then they wouldn't have a depressurization event when the two dock together and and open their doors. So they never actually like. There was never just a, a smooth corridor between the the two spacecraft. Um, you had to go into the the airlock, have the airlock pressurized to the correct pressure and then go into this, the Apollo or vice versa. But this was really, truly the first international space station. Okay. The Solute program was, um, Solute program was the first space station program from the Soviet Union. And this was a pretty interesting, it was very ill-fated, unfortunately. Um, a lot of things just didn't go right with the Solute station. Here's a, an artist's, uh, an artist representation. Or actually, this might actually be a real image. It looks low quality enough to be a real image, at least. Yeah, I think that might be a real image. So this is the station here, and then you can see two Soyuz craft docked to the station. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about the Solute program. Um, it was somewhat successful. There were a few stays of a few weeks at the, at the Solute stations. But, um, yeah, this is Solute 5 and 6, I think, or so it's just Solute 6. Um, which I believe that they, they used the same module and then they just, the same station module, and then they just added on numbers um, for the number of times that the Soyuz went up there. So the Soyuz is interesting. This this part right here that's like bell-shaped is the part that actually comes back into the atmosphere. This part is called the orbital segment, which is where the, the, the cosmonauts hang out when they're on orbit. It's a little bit roomier. And then this is the service module. This has all the, their air and water and stuff that they need. And then like propellant as well and batteries. And then the solar panels come off the sides. Um, 
But yeah, this, this part right here is the part that actually comes back down from space. And then this part and this part just burn up. They, they, they release all three segments and then they all go into the atmosphere and only the descent and ascent module, which is right here, actually comes back. So there's the Solute program. Um, what rock did they use to get the station into orbit? I believe that this was the Soyuz, um, that they used the Soyuz uh, rocket. I could be wrong. They may have used the Proton. I don't know if the Proton was active at that time. If you don't know what I'm talking about, everybody, the Proton rocket is the Russian heavy lift rocket. Um, it looks very interesting. It looks like it has boosters on the side, but those are actually are not boosters. It's kind of weird. Um, 1960. Okay, so yeah, they may then the proton was probably what what they used to put the solute up. Um, yeah, it's a it is an interesting. I think it's actually a really beautiful rocket, to be honest. Is it just the bigger version of the Electron? Uh, no. <laughs> They are the electron and the proton are not related in any way. I know that that would seem that way, but the electron is from Rocket Lab, and the proton is a Russian rocket. So this is this is post Soviet Union. Here you can see the Russian flag on it on there. Um, these things are actually not boosters on the side. These are oxygen tanks. Um, so it has it actually has um, six different oxygen tanks on the outside of the the fuel tank. Is it liquid oxygen? Yeah. And then I believe that it uses um, kerosene. Nice. Yeah. So it has a kerosene tank in the middle and then the liquid oxygen. And this is super, I think these are super interesting, the way that they stage there. This is the second stage right here. Um, and you can see that that's just like a lattice. It's not an actual solid structure. They actually light that engine before they detach the rocket, the, the first stage. It's called a, um, I think it's called a hot stage, the hot staging. So they light that engine. And so fire actually comes out the sides of this. And then, then they detach the, the first stage. It's really interesting. Show a video of it. Oh, I don't think that there's any like videos that I can, that I've ever seen of a hot staging. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to look, look for it. I haven't ever seen one. But a lot of Russian rockets use this, actually. The Soyuz uses it as well. Um, so, pretty cool. Okay, so this is their heavy lift rocket that lifts their, their segments of the space station and stuff. What are the benefits of hot staging compared to normal staging? Um, you can, you can um, ignite your engine and get it up to full thrust before you detach. So... You don't have any coast time in between the stages where you're losing velocity. So the, the first stage can continue to burn when you light the second stage. So the first stage is burning, 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 and then you light the second stage and then get it up to full thrust, and then the first stage burns out, and then you detach. So... Yeah, so it's a little bit more efficient, uh, like velocity-wise. Yeah, it's a little bit more efficient, and I think that it's a little bit simpler as well because one of the problems with um, with rockets is when you light the rock, when you light your engines, you have to have your your uh, your fuel pushed toward the engines. It's not something that we really think about, um, but like when you're on the ground, it's really easy because the gravity pushes the fuel down, right? But if you are going up and then all of a sudden you cut off the first stage engine, the fuel inside will start to slosh around and you can get you can get air bubbles that get sucked into the turbo pumps. And if the turbo pumps pull in any um, air, then they can explode. And so um, if you have continuous thrust through the whole process that that fuels will be settling down toward the bottom um, and so that makes it more simple as well that's why they designed the Soyuz and the Proton that way 
Okay. Um, Apollo, Soyuz, the Solute. Let's talk about just really quick the Skylab. So the Skylab was super interesting because what it was in terms of like actual hardware. Let's see if this is big. Yeah. So this is the Skylab. This is the first United States um, space station. You can see that it's asymmetrical. There was supposed to be a second. Um, there was supposed to be a second arm over here, but it never deployed because it was damaged during launch. And this is literally a piece of foil <laughs> over top of the station um, that they had to put on it because this arm didn't deploy on the other side. There were radiators to keep it cool um, on the underside of where the so there are solar panels on the, the sun facing side. And then on the sh shaded side, there are radiators to keep the, the station cool. Well, they, it didn't deploy on this one side. And so the station got really hot and it was like almost 200 degrees Celsius inside the station at one point. Um, obviously no one was there during that time because you would be, instantly dead but <clears throat> the uh the before the, they thought for a while everyone thought that the skylab was going to be a total loss um that they wouldn't be able to put any people up there because it was getting getting too hot but they sent some people up there and they did they just made this makeshift it's like putting a tarp <laughs> over top of it it's just foil um and it was just this shade that they put over top of it to keep the sun from actually hitting the station and reflected the light away and it worked. And so talk about just making it work. Right. Um, and then they later on, they added on this uh, large solar array to power the station. Um, this is super interesting. So we've looked at a Saturn five before, right? And the Saturn five was a huge rocket. And it had multiple stages. Well, let's actually just go back and look at images. It had multiple stages. The first stage, oh, this is actually a good. Uh... So the first stage is this bottom part, right? And then that falls away. And here's the second stage, right? And then here's the third stage. Well, Skylab was actually just the third stage of the Saturn V just hollowed out. They didn't have any fuel tanks in it. So it was when they launched the Skylab, it was on a Saturn V. And <laughs> instead of having a command module on top, they just put a nose cone and um, you'll see what it looks like. It's super interesting. So this is what Skylab looked. So th this is a Saturn V. It just doesn't look quite like the Saturn V we're used to seeing. And here is here is the actual Skylab in inside the the fairing here. But it really is just the hollowed out third stage of the Saturn V. Um, so is the black part the Skylab, or is it in the white part? It's both. So, yeah, super interesting in my in my estimation. Oops, that one. Um, where did our Skylab picture go? Anyway, so Skylab was interesting. Um, they did, I think, three human missions up to the Skylab, and they did a whole bunch of research there. And there's some fun um, photos. Somebody has their. Astro, astronauts. How did they get them to the space station? What rocket would they use? They used a Saturn 1B, which um, was the Saturn 5's little brother. 1B.
Yep. So there's the Saturn V in comparison to the Saturn 1B. Here's the Saturn V, here's the Saturn 1B. Right there. So um, this is how they got the Apollo module into orbit. This is the same rocket that they used for the Apollo Soyuz test pro program. So, yep, Saturn 1B. Li just, just a little version of the Saturn V. What are the engines on the bottom? Does it still use the same main engines that the Saturn V does, or are they different? These are J2s. So oh, it's basically cut off the bottom stage of the Saturn V, and that's it? Pretty much. Yeah. Um, this, <laughs> this, these fuel tanks, this is interesting. These fuel tanks, the, you can see that they're actually cylindrical, that it's not one big cylindrical piece. They're s smaller cylinders. These are redstone rockets. These are the same rockets that we used to put um, the first American man in space, Alan Shepard, and they just strapped a bunch of them together. <laughs> um, and then, yeah. So solar shade using tinfoil and... Um, and strapping redstone rockets together to make the Saturn 1B. Rocket science. Um, <clears throat> all right. So Skylab. Um, the Skylab interior. So there's some fun pictures. This is this is the most famous one, I think. Um, this two these two astronauts, and one is balancing on the fi finger of the other. Skylab had actually a lot of interior volume because it was just one piece. Like the International Space Station is kind of skinny. And so you, it's not much bigger than like you could stand up in. I think it's only like two and a half meters in diameter, the interior. Um, and so there's not a whole bunch of space, but the Skylab had a bunch of space um, inside of it. Um, and... Isn't there a video of them just like doing laps, basically? Yeah. The um, yeah. That's what I'm pulling up right here. Yeah. So this, the, these images are super tiny and terrible quality. You can't even see that. Um, Got to get rid of all these tabs. That's what I need to do. Boop a doo. Okay. Um. Skylab astronaut. Um, I don't know. Let's see here. Maybe there's a better. Yeah, these. I mean, look at how tiny this is. But ah. So this is inside Skylab. You can see they had plenty of room. And this is them actually running along the walls. Um, pretty cool. A lot of fun, actually. How much fun would that be? That would be awesome. Just doing flips around. The inside of that is huge. Yeah. Yeah, so this was the inside of the third stage of the Saturn V, and then they just put, like, life support systems, and, yeah, so really, really large um, space station. The interior of this is, was actually pretty similar to the interior of the entire International Space Station, and they did it in one launch. That's how powerful the Saturn V was. And then here's the the portion that they added on later that had... A bunch of stuff. Oh, gonna bonk your head there, bro. Anyway, um, yeah, pretty interesting stuff for sure. First shot, have, what? Have you seen the video of, that the Air Force did to test how animals react to zero g when they put cats in a plane and then free fall? Have you yeah, seen that? I have. <laughs> they're like constantly like twisting around because they think that they're falling. But 
I mean, they are. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's pretty but, funny. How big was the, how big was Skylab compared to the shuttle? Uh, pretty big. Um, like quite a bit larger, actually. In comparison. Let's see here. Yeah. So here's Skylab, right here. There's the shuttle. So Skylab is actually bigger than the shuttle. And then here was the Apollo dock to the Skylab. And then, so the internal volume of Skylab was similar to the internal volume of the International Space Station. I mean, you can't go in here. There's nothing in here to go in. The, the only modules that you can go in are right here. So Skylab is huge. Solute 1, Mir, which we'll talk about in just a second. Solute 7. So there were two different ones. Okay. But yeah, S Skylab was by far the largest single launch space station ever. Was it really necessary for them to show the, uh, the, the stuff that captures sun? I forgot what it's called. <laughs> solar panels? The solar panels on oh, the yeah. <laughs> Like takes up the whole screen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, uh, yeah, the, the the by far the largest part of this International Space Station are, is the solar arrays. Okay, um, and I'm not going to talk about this much, but if you want to find a really interesting story, check out the mutiny on Skylab. The uh, the astronauts that were on Skylab um, got really tired, and NASA was pushing them too hard, and so they just turned off their radios and were like, screw you, and they didn't work for a couple of days. And because uh, <laughs> they were getting too stressed. And so, yeah, they, they essentially held a mutiny in space. So if you want to check that out, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool story. All right, here is Mir. And Mir looks like a complete trash heap of a space station because that's essentially what it was. I mean, look, look at how just discombobulated and confusing this looks. <laughs> It's just got like random it's a solar KSP panels. Version in real life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a KSP space station in real life. Um, it's just got random solar panels and radiators sticking out of random places. Um, it's all Lab to one. is the KSP station because you just send it up in one launch because you don't want to rendezvous crap. <laughs> That's true. But for those of you who want to practice rendezvous and docking and build a space station, the mirror is the perfect example. Um, yeah, I mean, look at or this. Or grab an it's asteroid just... and smash it into the KSC. <laughs> this is, yeah, one of the craziest. Um, so Mir was uh, the long-duration Russian slash Soviet space station. And it was up for a long time. Um, they actually added a space shuttle docking module to it in 1995. And so there was a few missions where the space shuttle went and actually docked with our Mir, space shuttle, our space shuttle, the United States space shuttle. So, There's only one space shuttle. The right. other is the Buron. The other one is the Buron. <laughs> If you want to check out, I was just wondering if it was like meant for the or, for their space shuttle or another one that they were building or something like that. Nope, it yeah. was. So this was the beginning of the International Space Station program. Really, um, when they started to build the International Space Station, the Russians and the the Americans were getting along very nicely, and they said, "Let's build a space station together." And so, in order to test a few of the the systems, they sent the uh, the STS, the Space Transport System, or what we call the shuttle, up there a couple of times. Um, the longest duration sp space flight of all time was done on Mir. Um, longest duration. Is this the dude who got stranded up there when the Soviet Union collapsed? No, it's a different one. Um, but let's see here. Human spaceflight first, most duration records, total human spaceflight by one country, longest single flight not by a woman. But Christina Koch just, just broke that record this year, which is cool. 
Um, longest continuous. See your longest human space flights. Yeah. Valery Polyokov. Um, spent the longest time in space at 437 consecutive days. Dang. So that's not one mission, not um, like two. That's yep. One. one, he he went up on a Soyuz and then stayed in space for 437 days on Mir. Was the goal to just stay in space for a long time or was he just working? Yeah, working on stuff. When he got back, he got super, super sick because of gravity sickness. But um, Vladimir Titov, Musa Manarov. So all of these were set on Mir, all these records. Um, Valery Polyakov, Sergei Ad Avdevyev. This is the guy that got stuck in space when the Soviet Union collapsed. No? No, <laughs> no that's so they not just, like, true. left him up there? That's not true because that's 1998. Yep. Um, there was a one dude. Oh, this, it's this dude. Kirkilov. Yeah. yeah, this guy. Because you can see the Soviet Union slash Russia. Because <laughs> the Soviet Wait. Union collapsed while he was in space. And then what happened to him? Did and then they, just... they were like, um, well, it was kind of, if you've seen the movie Terminal no. uh, with, with Tom Hanks, it's essentially the same story, but the but guy flies from his country. His While he's flying, his country stops existing, and he lands in the United States and can't get past customs because his passport's no longer valid because <laughs> it came from a country that doesn't exist anymore. And so he just has to stay in the airport for like several years. Um, it, it's essentially that story just in space. Um, so they didn't really have a space program when this Soviet Union collapsed. And so they had to just get him back. Anyway, there's a whole story about it. Um, it's called, I think it's called The Last Cosmonaut, which is... Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube, which is a really stupid name because the Russian, um, the Russians still call their space people cosmonauts. So anyway, uh, yeah, so Mir was interesting, super cool stuff. Um, check it out if you want to learn more about it. Does okay. cosmonaut just mean like space person in the Russian language? Yeah, Cosmos, os cosmos. So cosmos is uh, is space in uh, in Russian. And then not is. Not is sailor. Dude, so they're space sailors. Yeah, Kershaw. well, that's what. Well, Kershaw. astronaut astronaut means star sailor. So, and Tycho not, which is the uh, oh my gosh, someone. Who is making a lot of noise? Um, David. Taiko knot, which is the Chinese equivalent, means sky sailor. So Taiko knot, astronaut, cosmonaut. Um, yeah. All right. Questions about any of the space stations that we've talked about? Skylab, Mir, Soyuz Apollo test program or a salute before we get to the International Space Station and finish up today? No? Okay. So, um, the International Space Station, you are going to be um, learning about the International Space Station. Specifically, you're going to do some research about one of the modules. So right now there are three people on the space station. Generally there are more. Um, in a few months there will be many more, probably nine at a time, once the uh, SpaceX Dragon starts flying. How many? What's, what's what? the most there have ever been on it? Um, 12 people. And when are they going to decommission the space shuttle? Space station? Space station, sorry, yeah. Uh, the space station will tentatively, I think that they're talking about like 2028, but we Why will see because it? it's getting old and, oh. it, and honestly, it's getting kind of dangerous. 
Eh, it's not that dangerous. Um, I don't know. Having a, an aging space station is pretty dangerous. Um, so you can check out the the people who are on the space station right now. Andrew Morgan is the current commander of the space station. Andrew Morgan. So is he is he in charge of like the Russians and stuff, or is it just the U.S. side? He's he's technically in charge of the whole station. But Oleg um, Skripochka, Oleg Skripochka is the only uh, uh, Russian up there right now. So he's probably on the Russian side, mostly just by himself. And Jessica Mir and Andrew Morgan are on the U.S. side, mostly by themselves, um, just doing some work on the on the space station. But he is in charge of the whole station. So. Any decision that is made by him is final for both this, the U.S. side and the Russian side. I'm just wondering, but is it has it so far only been the U.S. that has had uh, commanders? Yeah, no. It... The Russians have command have commanded the space station um, like almost half the time. Oh, okay. So. Um, yeah. Has Canada only had one commander? Yes. Hadfield? Chris had Chris Hadfield was the only Canadian commander of the station. The Europeans have had a few commanders. Um, Alex Gerst, I think it was his name, was a, a German astronaut that took command of the, the space station for a while. Um, a few Italians have had command of the space station, so... How do you get command of the space station? Have previous experience on the space station and previous astronaut experience and go up onto the space station on like your third or fourth space mission. Who votes you in? Is it like just the, a who... So hmm. the, the chief astronaut at NASA and the chief cosmonaut at Russia, at the Russian space station at Roscosmos. Um, make the decision on who is um, going to command each mission. Hmm. So they're given command by the by Roscosmos and by NASA. So okay, so you are going to going to be doing some research on the International Space Station, okay, um, and the different modules. Um, National Space Station. Okay. So we can see the different modules. Um, here's an in interior view. It looks very, very cluttered, which it is. But uh, yeah, the space station. What's cool about a zero gravity environment is you can put experiments on every surface. There is no floor, there is no ceiling, there are no walls. There are just surfaces. Do um, they use like the lights though to kind of orientate the astronauts though? They like try yeah, they try and orient the so you can see the the the, the lights are up here. Um, and there are no lights down here, but they <clears throat> To kind of orient them, yes, they do have lights and so forth. And then they dim the lights at, at night um, to, uh, to kind of simulate the night-day cycle because the space station goes around the, the, the Earth, I think it's like 18 times every day. So it, has, it experiences 18 sunrises and 18 sunsets, or is it 19? I, f I forget. Every 90 minutes. So... Yeah, you're going to be doing some research on this. All right, so here's what you're going to be doing. Um, so you're going to go to this. Uh, you're going to go to the assembly of the International Space Station Wikipedia page. And you are going to select one of these modules. Okay. And you're going to do some research on that module. There is the Zarya, the Unity, Zvezda. Destiny, Harmony, Columbus, Japanese Experiment Module, which doesn't have a name, it's just the, called the, the JEM, the Japanese Experiment Module. Isn't it Kibo? The yeah, Kibo also known as Kibo, but this is the official name. 
Like these are the official names of these. Destiny, Harmony, Zvezda, Unity, Zarya. Okay. Um, so you're you're going to select one of one of these. You're going to do some research as to when it was launched, how big it is, so what's like the internal volume, what does it do, what is the purpose of it, um, how how does it work, um, where is it on the International Space Station, um, and a few other things, okay? Uh, yeah, so you're gonna be doing some research on that. I will, again, I will make that, uh, make that assignment live for you. Um, and then you are going to be just turning, turning this in as kind of like some bullet points um, about those certain modules. Any questions as we finish up the day? I said that this was going to be a short class, but it turned out be, to be a relatively long class. Uh, if the URL ends in like .jp, is it trustworthy? .jp means Japan. So, so I imagine I imagine that that's fine. Okay. As long um, as it's China. Yeah, as long as it's not dot ch. Okay, so are you looking at the the Kibo? Yeah. Yeah. And if it's Jacks, if it's Jacks a job JP, then you're good, man. Because Jacks, remember, is the is the official Japanese. Um, space agency. Yeah, that's what. It is. Yep, there it is, right there. The Japanese experiment module. So there are actually no people on it. So it's like NASA, but you replace the N with a J and the S with the X. Um, correct. It has two A's. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it's NASA. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any uh, any other questions on? the assignment or anything it is due on Friday Friday cool okay well I will be uploading this to YouTube so if you have if you want to go back and watch this um, you can do that uh, and we will call it good there all right cool all right what said cool bro cool bro all right um i'm gonna stop presenting and then i will see you all on friday have a good day